So, when I was 10 years old, I was watching TV, and I think it was the kind of the classic Christmas time, and um, this came on for the first time. It's the first time I discovered it as 10 years old. Maybe not. Right, so those pre-credit title um, sequence from Goldfinger was, uh, actually, I don't know if that is Goldfinger, but it was Goldfinger I saw. Um, it was uh, created by the late Morris Binder, who went on to create almost uh, half of the, um, actually made over half of the uh, credit pre-credit sequences. Um, but it was the music that really grabbed me, and it kind of gave me this kind of lifelong obsession, which what I think is like the best theme tune ever written. Uh, and I got, I got kind of really obsessed by the, the theme tune. I started seeking out the stuff to the point of like hunting down albums like this is the Korean version of Live and Let Die. That's the, the Korean album there. Um, two years later, um, I went into our local bookshop that was run by Brian Forbes, the film director, and his wife, Nanette Newman. And they were having a clear out. They were doing like a charity sale and everything. And I bought these two albums off them with my pocket money. And I played these incessantly, um, you know, listening to every track and how, it, what really fascinated me was the way that the James Bond theme was kind of woven into almost every track as kind of like a little underlay coming through. And in particularly uh, the, the piece uh, Chateau Flight, which is in Thunderball. But as I dug deeper into the world of the theme tune, I started discovering that all kind of weird sort of cover versions of this. So there are literally hundreds of, hundreds of cover versions so covering every kind of musical conceivable style. So you've got techno, dub, heavy metal, country, reggae, hip hop, um, has all been covered, James Bond. So artists like Glenn Campbell, Barry Adamson, The Art of Noise, Hank Marvin, The Scatterlights, Moby, and that epitome of pop culture reference, The Crazy Frog. Um, but this is probably one of my favorites, which is uh, Selector. James Bond! Tequila! tune fits reggae and ska particularly well. It's just something about the tempo and the rhythm of it that it really fits in. But it's also been sampled by loads of bands as well. At least 120 songs have sampled the famous dum ba -lum -bum. Uh, The Wu-Tang Clan have done it, uh, Public Enemy. Um, the Beatles 1965 album, Help, um, has used it. And it was also the inspiration for Johnny Rivers' uh, 1966 hit, Secret Agent Man, which was used as the theme tune for Danger Man. Um, now, if I asked you who composed the music, hands up who thinks it's this man. That's uh, John Barry. Oh, there's it's, it's an enlightened audience, a couple of people. Uh, you know, it's a trick question. So it's interesting, when you look at the albums and stuff, you see down the bottom it says, music composed and conducted by John Barry. But actually, it was in fact this guy, Monty Norman. Um, Norman was a composer who'd written um, so lots of songs for performers like Cliff Richard, Tommy Steele, he did the soundtrack for Espresso Bongo, great film, um, Count Basie, and, and he wrote several uh, musicals. He was an Ivan, Ivan Novello winner, and uh, yeah, he was the man kind of behind it, and that's the actual score there, so you can see his name at the top. Um, as an arrangement, I think it's so effective, yet so simple. It's, it's literally the only thing I've ever learned to play on a guitar. Because it sounds that simple. Um, but it really has that kind of, you know, rhythm about it. It was originally recorded on the 21st of June, 1962, uh, using five saxophones, nine brass, and a rhythm section. But the guitar was played by Vic Flick, who was a session musician, um, on a 1939 English Clifford Essex Paragon Deluxe guitar. Now, that's a name for a guitar. Um, 
Oh, and all he got was a one-off fee of like six to seven pound fifty for that. Well, actually, I guess it was probably quite a lot for, for recording that, that particular riff. And he actually also played on the Beatles' Help album as well, so they probably, I think they brought him in just because they knew he'd done the original riff. So, um, Norman was credited with writing the theme, uh, as we can see on the sheet music, uh, and he'd got royalties since 1962, but between 76 and 99, he collected £485,000 in royalties, which works out at about £21,000 a year, which isn't bad for a little ditty. Um, but when Dr. No came out, the track was actually arranged by John Barry. Uh, and he would go later to go and, of course, compose the soundtracks for it and 11 other Bond films. Um, so what really happened was, and what's really interesting is, uh, is Monty Norman wrote something and delivered it to the film uh, makers. And they kind of went, yeah, it's right, but it's not quite doing it for us. You know, we need to kind of, you know, do something a little bit more on this. So, it, there was a big battle, so Barry, um, John Barry kind of rewrote a lot of what uh, Monty Norman did. And there was a, Monty Norman actually took the Sunday Times to court twice uh, in 1976, no, 1997 and 2001, where he won 30,000 pounds worth of damages, um, just to contest the fact that he actually had written it. Um, and during, during the uh, two-week court case, it was described as one of the most famous pieces of music in the world. Now, Norman describes the distinctive style of the guitar uh, is dum di dum 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 and claims it was inspired by a song of his called Bad Sign, Good Sign, sung by Indian characters in A House for Mr. Biswas, which was a musical uh, that he'd written based on a novel by V.S. Naipaul called... Um, uh, yeah, called the House of Mr. Biz uh, House of Mr. Biswas, and it was set in the Indian community in Trinidad. Um, Norman explained on his website, "Unfortunately for us, the show was uh, too expensive, and even worse, in 1960, it was pretty near impossible to find uh, an, uh, an Asian and West Indian entire cast in London. So the songs never got further than one or two live demos, and the, uh, the show was sadly abandoned. With a heavy heart, I did what all composers do with their obsolete songs." I put my melodies from Mr. Biswas, including Bad Sign, Good Sign, into my bottom drawer, hoping one day to resurrect one or two of them for some other context. As time moved on, many people suggested I record the progenitor of the signature theme heard in J uh, Dr. No. So essentially what happened was, um, the, the producers of Dr. No came up to Monty Norman and said, could you record something? And he kind of rubbished through his files and went, oh, that'll do, and sort of you know, phoned it in, essentially. Um, so, in 2005, um, Norman actually released a recording. He did release this album with several stuff he'd done called Completing the Circle. And uh, this is how he insists the original Dum Tiddy Dum was um, recorded. This unlucky sneeze, and what is worse, I came into the world the wrong way round. Fond, it's all agreed that I'm the reason why my father fell into the village pond and drowned. Now, that's all very well and good, but I, I have trouble with Monty's story here because the novel Kate wasn't written until 1961. Now, Doctor No film came out in 1962, so even taking into account that Norman might have been working on a musical in 1960 for an unpublished book raises some serious doubts in my mind whether he's being economical with the truth there or something. But, you know, the, the courts have said that he, he wrote that. Um, whether that actual story it might have got conflated with his times and dates, etc. But, um, but that's not the only source that uh, the James Bond theme comes from. I discovered um, this fantastic piece of music from Artie Shaw's night, um, orchestra and a track called Nightmare from 1938. 
So that, that's commonly known in music as a vamp. Um, and uh, during the 2001 court case, uh, musicologist uh, Stanley Sadie was brought in, and his job was to kind of break down the entire uh, theme tune for the courts to decide who kind of did what. Um, so, you know, the James Bond theme is identified by John Barry's bebop swing jazz arrangement parts, uh, but Monty Norman's kind of beginning part is equally integral. So, you know, in a sense, it was written by both of them um, and, and kind of shared out. Uh, but the James Bond theme isn't the only one um, that, that I really love. Uh, and the other one it was actually written by John Barry for the 1963 From Russia With Love. It's equally one of my favourites. And this is the 007 theme, which often gets confused for the James Bond theme. No matter how many times I listen to it, I have to say, every time I listen to the James Bond theme, or that theme, I can never get bored of it. You know, it's been 40 years I've been listening to that, and it's still great. Um, every, nearly, nearly every single James Bond film that over the, the last 24 have had uh, a slightly different arrangement of the James Bond theme in through the, the main theme's tunes, uh, often reflecting the time it was made. So you've got Eric Serra's Goldeneye in 1995, and David Arnold's Die Another Day in 2002, which are two versions that are particularly bad. Um, they're, they're kind of really overproduced and trying too hard with the techno. But Moby's version, which is very kind of dancey, is, is a good version, I like that. Um, but when 2006's um, remake of Casino Royale came out, they gave up uh, on the theme tune completely and went straight into the, the, the main song, You Know My Name, by Chris Cornell. Wait, where's the thing? Where's the bomb thing you? Not there. So, I was very disappointed at that. So, um, fortunately, Skyfall and Spectre returned to the traditional uh, edition. Um, I'm not going to play all of those kind of uh, sequences, but if you look them up on YouTube, Lots of people have edited James Bond gun barrel sequences and done the whole lot, so you can watch like all 24 in a row, should you wish. Um, so, um, I know I, I'm not actually delving into the world of the, um, the theme songs here, because that would just take forever. Uh, I mean, there are so many. Um, but, you know, it's, it's ironic that in the entire 55-year history of James Bond themes, that the only one Bond song to ever win an Oscar and get to number one, plus a BAFTA, although Skyfall did get a BAFTA, uh, was Sam Smith's reedy, weedy, wavering writings on the wall. So it might be good version, controversial, you might like that, but I think it's rubbish. I mean, the arrangement's great, but his vocals are terrible. Um, so, go, going back to Stanley Sadie, um, who was the musicologist in the court case, he actually, this is his breakdown and how he explained it all. And so, it's, it's quite simple, and you can see that there are repeats in here. So I guess if you've got a coloured kazoo, you can see where we're going with this. <laughs> so, ah, suddenly everyone goes, ah, so another moment they're enlightened. So if you've got a blue or a green kazoo, um, we're, we're going to have a, have a quick go at this before we go into the full thing. So if you've never played a kazoo before, go for the thick end, not the thin end, and don't blow, hum. Okay, so so the, the first bit is the vamp, and, you, and it, it's repeated twice. So you go. Oh, see, I just did this. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's that bit. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so the next bit is the guitar riff. <laughs> And then you're going to do the, uh, the semitone to scent, which is... <laughs> so have a go at that. <laughs> so 
here, there's just one person at the back there. <laughs> All your blues and greens, you've got to join in. Okay, right, and then we go... Then we go uh, back to the repeat of the vamp, so that's a... Yeah, you're all gonna that way. Yes, right. Okay. So, all right. Then, okay, you, you with the pink, this is your turn to get into the, the bit of the swing. So we go for the bebop. So the bebop is. Okay, right. Okay, so. Alright, we'll, we'll, we'll skip over that bit. Uh, <laughs> so the next is, is orange. So if you've got orange, this is Bebop 2. So this is the next bit. So it's now. Okay. And then, and then the climax is. <laughs> this isn't going to end well, I can tell. <laughs> <laughs> but we're committed now, we're going to have to go with this. Alright, so, then we go back to the blues for the vamp. I know you know all the vamp, so we won't go through that again. And then the guitar rift, so, which is... Okay, and then finally, uh, we finish up the coda, which goes... <laughs> okay. Right. I really don't think this is a good idea. Oh well. Okay. Are you ready for the, the play along now? Okay, right. I'll, I'll try and leave with it. So, okay. So remember at first, just the blues and greens, okay? So here we go.